Here is the question that I posed at the end of the last part of this lecture, and there are two things to notice. First of all, the air puck speeds up, and when things speed up, they gain kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy has increased. And the second thing to notice is that nothing has changed height. Gravitational potential energy is entirely to do with how high things are. And so if nothing has changed height, then the gravitational potential energy has to be unchanged. Now, you might have been tempted to pick B, because if the kinetic energy increased and you understand the idea of conservation, you know that that energy must have come from somewhere, and so some other energy must have decreased. And that's true, but it's not the gravitational potential energy that will have decreased. Again, this is a case of spring potential energy, which we saw previously. So the spring potential energy here is what has decreased to allow the kinetic energy to increase. So here's our times. And now note I've made our middle time not maximum height, but just some time when it's up higher. And so it has some lower speed. And one thing we know we can do, no matter what these numbers are, is that this is uniformly accelerated motion. And so for one thing, we should be able to say that v2 squared, let me label this time as my initial and this time as my final, and use uam. So v2 squared should be v1 squared plus 2a delta y, right? So y2 minus y1. And notice that because this is free fall, we know a. I've set up positive, so a is negative g. Okay, and so I can rewrite this whole thing as v2 squared equals v1 squared minus 2gy2 minus minus plus 2gy1. And now, you know, I'm going to collect all my 2s on one side and all my 1s on the other side. Okay, and because I am picky and weird, I'm going to say, I don't like these twos. I'm going to divide them out. I, you know, I know that's going to result in some factors of a half two. And, you know, this ball has some mass, so I just feel like multiplying through by it. Right, so... Hmm, that's sort of interesting. But let's just look at now... I'm going to relabel again. I'm going to now call this moment the initial and this moment the final. And if I do that, I'm going to sort of get all the same stuff. So look at that. I've got apparently this thing, I have got a pattern, a half m v squared plus m g y. And whether I put ones, twos, or threes on the v's and y's, oh look, with twos it equals the same expression with ones. And with threes, it equals the same expression as twos. Oh, and that's the same as that. And so this all equals this. So this expression, a half mv squared plus mgy, is a constant. It's a conserved quantity. And so this is the thing we're going to call the energy. And look, this piece has to do with how fast the ball is going. That's the kinetic energy. And this piece has to do with how high the ball is. That's the gravitational potential energy. I want to be able to represent this set of ideas in one more way, right? And physicists love charts and, and pictures, so I want to draw a bar chart. 
So I'm going to draw an energy bar chart and I'm going to use it to connect time one, right, when the ball has just left my hand, with time two when it's up higher and still moving. Okay, and so I'm going to note that at time one it has a lot of kinetic energy and it has not very much potential energy. At time two, it has a lot of potential energy, not very much kinetic energy. And I can say that its total energy, I can see this K plus UG is constant. So I can say the total energy looks like this at time two, and it looks just like that at time one. And I'll just label all those. Here is an energy bar chart of this whole thing, and we'll be drawing a lot of energy bar charts to help us think about energy as we go along.